Hey, Mr. Short, this is Chair Aunt Tavares. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Madam Chair, I can hear you fine. I was uh, awesome. And I can I can hear you uh, as well. So so far, so good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, we've got one more minute according to what I'm looking at. Let's see, we've got me. Um, we've got Commissioner Ruggles, we've got Commissioner Burton. Um, we've got Commissioner Best. So we've got four. Um, I believe that that is all we're going to have for the study session. Okay. And then we will have, um, we'll have a quorum for the meeting. Madam Chair, that works. As long as you have a quorum for the meeting, study session, you don't make any decisions. So you right. don't really need yeah. a quorum. We can okay. start. All right, it early. is 4.30. So uh, Mr. Shore, why don't you go ahead and start the set study session, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, commissioners. And we will go ahead and start with the study session cases. The first case is EV21072, which is a request for conditional use permit uh, of previously CEP 16020 for a solid waste transfer station on 9.73 acres in the general zone. And this is out at Mormon Lake. And I have to say that this case would have been administratively uh, renewed, but they were three or four months late on applying for that. So they do have to go to a commission hearing because of that. This is Zach's case and he has his PowerPoint ready for you. Go ahead, Zach. Thanks, Bob. Uh, good evening. Commissioners, so this is the solid waste transfer station at Mormon Lake. What I have on the screen for you is a map. We've got Lake Mary Road here in red, and yellow is Mormon Lake Road. And in 2016, we had uh, the first conditional use permit for this. Previously, there was a solid waste transfer station here that Public Works was managing. And in 2016, the conditional use permit was approved to move it down here on the southwest portion of the Mormon Lake area uh, near Mormon Lake Lodge down here at the southwest portion and Mormon Lake, uh, I guess, properties is, is the owner of that and took on management of the solid waste transfer station. Uh, obviously, they're just taking, you know, normal types of municipal waste and uh, putting it in dumpsters where then they transfer it on to landfills from there. So sort of a zoom in on the area. Here's in the red hatching Mormon Lake Lodge property in RC resort commercial zoning. Uh, we have in the yellow area here, these are AR zones. So single family residential one acre minimum properties. I think most of these are one acre. We've got some smaller down here and some larger over in this area. 
Uh, all of this property, which most of it is in floodplain, uh, this is in the general zone. And so the transfer station that was approved in 2016 is located just outside of that floodplain area uh, here. And here's an aerial, so you can see generally that transfer station is in this area, Mormon Lake Lodge again here, and you can see that some of these residences are fairly close here. I took a photo in 2016, this was originally my case, and I think that this area is the area that's now converted into the transfer station, and you can see the houses in the back there. And here's the site plan. So coming up from Mormon Lake Road on Clover Drive, uh, they've got con compact aggregate base um, for their maneuvering areas, a 30 foot dumpster here and two eight yard dumpsters here. So trucks would come in, kind of go around and come back in and down Clover Drive. You'll see there's an existing barbed wire fence that goes across this property. This um, it looks like it's all contained on this particular parcel here. Uh, there's also a well that's an electric riser that's existed there. I'm not sure how long, but um, possibly some of the fencing is related to that activity as well. Um, on the site plan, they showed in 2016 that they would put a six foot wood uh, screening fence around the transfer station area. And so as I go through the analysis of the case, what I was going to look at is that the trips proposed uh, originally were fairly limited. I wanted to make sure that they were keeping within that limit or otherwise uh, adding to their narrative, extended amounts of trips, that sort of thing for your analysis. I wanted to, I never really had a chance to inspect that the fence was put in the screening fence. Uh, also, one of the conditions from the 2016 case was about installing some landscaping, I think, along sort of the border here for some more buffering along the residential area. So I never got any landscape plan on that, and I haven't verified that that's been installed. So I wanted to make sure that that was either installed or that they were going to submit a new landscape plan for that and to, to actually install that material. Um, and then within our staff sort of study session just before this, um, Jessica Simmons, our urban wildlife planner, just asked <clears throat> if we had wildlife friendly fencing or maybe we could condition that here. And I wanted to get the commission's opinion on that. Obviously, with Mormon Lake, there's a decent amount of wildlife activity there. There wasn't a condition on the original uh, use permit. I think that was somewhat of an oversight. It's pretty active area for wildlife management. And they have this existing fence that I'm assuming is not wildlife friendly and that's something that I'll look into. But I wanted to get the commission's opinion on sort of adding a condition about either retrofitting or any fencing that exists. I, I would think aside from the screening fence in this small area here, that maybe we could look into retrofitting the rest of this area with wildlife friendly fencing. Uh, so that's all I had. And if the commission has any question, uh, comments or questions on that, I'm happy to take them. Hello, Zach. Hey, uh, I've got a couple of comments for you. Um, I realize that uh, the other commissioners on right now aren't aware of the fact that uh, I make it a normal practice to listen in for the staff portion of this prior to our study session. So uh, the only thing I was going to suggest is uh, that uh, I've been out to that uh, location with you in 2016, looked at it, uh, but I think it would be very, very, very good idea if Jessica actually uh, got out to the site and took a good thorough look at uh, <clears throat> the fencing that's out there and then uh, to come up with a recommendation uh, as to whether we should uh, put in a requirement or address a requirement for wildlife friendly fencing around that site. It's uh, pretty open, of course. Um, so, uh, but I think uh, if Jessica could take a good thorough look at it on site, uh, I think it would be very helpful for all of us. 
Thanks, Commissioner Ruggles. Uh, that was the plan and we'll make sure we take a look. Any others? Thank you. Okay, thanks, Zach. We'll move on to the next case. Uh, this is uh, this is my case. This is um, SUB 2008, request to modify condition of approval of a preliminary subdivision plat for a 22 lot subdivision on 111 acres. In the AR5 zone, the request would remove the requirement to annex into a fire district. And this is the Tall Tales Ranch last year. Let me go ahead and share my screen. And okay, can everyone see this all right? Yeah, we can see it, Mr. Short. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, so this is the request. Uh, it is basically to remove this requirement. Uh, it is a condition number six, approved by the Board of Supervisors. Subdivision shall be annexed to the Summit Fire District prior to final approval. I won't read the rest of it, but that's basically the gist of it. And they would like to replace it with the subdivision CCNRs will encourage individual homeowners to acquire fire service from the Summit Fire District. Uh, and that's just something that that I surmised from actually I kind of gleaned from their uh, narrative, uh, basically what they would like to do. Um, anyway, to give you a little background on this, uh, the developer and the engineering company they work with <coughs> approached me a while ago and they said they were having some difficulty annexing in, into the Summit Fire District. Uh, so I've tried to work with them that with with them on that a little bit. Uh, one of the issues is that staff does not normally do this. I've had several subdivisions, as you know, and uh, we've often had that requirement and I've never heard of, of an issue with it, but they're having some difficulty with that. So they are here today. And uh, if the commission would like to ask them some questions about that, they, you know, they might be able to explain a little bit better the issue that it, that has happened. Anyway, I wanted to show you a map just to give you kind of some background of the fire district and the subdivision. This is the Tall Tales subdivision down here. Uh, this is Costnino Road, and there is an existing fire station right here. I do know that Summit is planning on closing one of those fire stations. I'm not sure which one that is. It could be this one. I really don't know, but that's about three miles from the subdivision. So obviously it's an optimum thing uh, to do. It appears from, you know, as we have looked at this, I mean, in the past, like I said, uh, this requirement's been on many subdivisions. The developer's always done it. I've never had any issues with it. Uh, uh, but it, it, it appears that, that they need to hire an attorney and have them uh, process work through the process of the annexation, which I understand from talking to fire chiefs and others that it is kind of a difficult process. But um, as you can see, here's the border of the Summit Fire District, not very far away. My understanding is they can annex. They don't have to follow this line. And I'm not positive about that, but that's my understanding. This is national forest, this is national forest, so they can kind of jump into the national forest and annex this piece without annexing these other pieces on the way. This is this uh, property right here also belongs to the applicant. And I think they've indicated they were, you know, willing to annex that property in as well if they need, if they need to. So with that, um, are there any questions from the commission? Uh, Mr. Short, this is um, Chair Ontiveros. If the applicant could speak to the commission tonight and just give us um, the information as to why there is the difficulty with the annexation, I think that would be helpful. Okay, I believe Mike Palmer is here. Mike, can you speak to that? Yes. Um, 
Ian might know better because he's been involved, but uh, the annexation, as we understand it, is a multi-year process. And I don't know if the other projects that you're talking about, Bob, were um, if they already touched existing district boundaries, but as Chief Mark Wilson got involved, um, he was quickly shut down by the county attorney and um you know we we don't have a problem with wanting to annex but it's a multi-year process and we're not wanting to wait that long um to sell lots build homes things like that the, I, I believe it goes through the state fire board and the state attorney correct me if i'm wrong ian but it's it's not necessarily a matter of us getting a form signed like we thought because as we talked with the summit fire board and chief wilson you know back in may or so everybody thought it was a very simple sign the form but it's it's not um and so the the condition to be annexed into a fire district um in the subdivision rules it's it's just strongly encouraged that, that a subdivision in Coconino County is part of the fire district. And so we're just looking to remove that so that we can move forward. Um, Mr. Palmer, this is Chair Aunt Tavares. And I'm going back to what Mr. Short's comments were um, prior to me asking you for the explanation. And that was that maybe you seeking the advice of an attorney and moving forward with that council, helping ha having the attorney help you get this going, would that not be a good alternative? It doesn't speed the process up. We, it does we, not we've speed consult, the we, process we, up. We, we've, consult, we've consulted an attorney, and it, you know, we're worried about the time, not not that we don't want to be part of the district. It's a it's a time issue at this point to. That the, the landowners can take advantage of the market and get selling lots and, and building homes. And how how many years does this process take? I was not given a specific, they just said a multi-year process. So that would be two or more. That's how I interpreted it, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for that explanation. Um mm -hmm. I do any of the other commissioners have any questions? I'm not, I'm not seeing any. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Yes, this is Vice Chair Don Walters. Um, Mr. Palmer, is it is it possible for you to get a subscription with them instead of being annexed and, and then having the homeowners get a subscription with the fire department rather than annexing the whole thing? That's what I did at Foxborough and, and seemed to work rather well. Is that an option? It is, but I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, if you know different, I believe it's a uh, by individual. Each individual can subscribe to their service, but I, I'm not aware that a whole subdivision can do that as a whole, but each individual homeowner can subscribe and be covered by Summit Fire District, yes. And as I understand, if according to Summit Fire, if let's say a house in there caught on fire, Summit Fire would still respond. And if there's any threat to life or additional property and or structures, they would still put the fire out. It's just that the homeowner would be billed the cost of that if they had not chosen to subscribe. Well, I think you're you're able to subscribe as a, the subdivision um, right now without any homes. And then as you build the homes, then those would be added on as individuals. But that's that's what I've I, I've seen done in the past. And I think that may be a, a more viable option for you rather than and it's, it's much cheaper to do it that way than than if they have to respond to something and more comforting to to us at the county that we're not going to create a forest fire because you're you're surrounded by forest here. That, that's that's I'm, my concern. Yeah, I'm definitely not 
definitely not oppose that. Who did you, if you don't mind me asking, I don't want to take up time, but, and if we need to talk outside this meeting, that's fine. But is that a, again, as we explored some of these options, not that one specifically, you know, Mark Wilson was kind of held in check by the county attorney saying, hey, you need to stop this. That's the applicant's deal. So who, who do, is that a, because I know, as I understand it, Summit Fire is now under jurisdiction and management of the city of Flagstaff Fire. Um, I, maybe Christine or, or uh, Ian can answer, answer this, um, you know, to get into that. But I, I would think that a subscription would be something you could do without the annexation. But again, with the city of Flagstaff being involved, that, that's, that changes things. I was, I was dealing with Munn's part. Um, if I can, if I can, I, mean, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I did talk to Mark Wilson today and he indicated that Summit's actually its own entity and they aren't connected to the city of Flagstaff because they, they're not in the city. They are uh, governed, they have the same, they have administration that's common with uh, Flagstaff, city of Flagstaff. He, um, he indicated he had talked to the board uh, a couple of weeks ago, I believe, and that they definitely wanted this subdivision to annex into the fire district, if at all possible. But as Commissioner um, Walters has indicated, we definitely, I mean, it's definitely, it's always a better process to take care of this before you start dividing into lots and selling off to people, or you can, you, you just, you lose control of the process. So we can certainly look at that as something that's viable, but we definitely don't want it to be left up to individual homeowners. We had a case a few months ago, the commission will remember, where I did talk to a fire chief and he indicated that if he came out, if they came out to a fire, the, the person, the owner of the house would have to approve them putting out the fire uh, because that was going to cost them several thousand dollars to do that. So it would appear that this wouldn't meet the public safety policies in our comprehensive plan that, you know, we definitely, when, when the county approves subdivisions, they want that uh, the, there to be the, the safety issues need to be addressed. So, but that is a good suggestion, Commissioner Walters, we can, we can certainly look at that. And, and Mr. Short, this is Sharon Tavares. Um, that is a good suggestion. And if that would work, that would be, that would really be great. That said, would we wouldn't we still need to do a modification? So instead of saying um, they would annex, they would subscribe, or would we, would we need to do that? Are, uh, are annex and subscribing, are those synonymous terms? No, Matt. Madam Chair, they, they're not synonymous. This boundary of the, as you're looking at this map here, the boundary of the uh, Summit Fire District could actually move and take in that if it, if it was annexed into the district. If they just got fire service from the district, they would still come, but they would, you know, they had pay for that fire, fire service separately. So I can, so we can uh, talk to Mark Wilson about that and see how that looks going forward. Um, obviously, the best thing is for them to annex into the district. And the, the problem, one, one of the issues is, of course, when you do, when you finish the final plat, that's it. You know, we're done. The county's part's done. They have no more, uh, you know, authority to, to change anything once that final plat is approved. This does have to move forward to the Board of Supervisors and be approved as well. But that's certainly something we can look at. Right. Um, thank you, Mr. Short. Commissioner Best, your hand is raised. Do you have questions or comments? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is certainly a departure from anything I remember over many years. Um, you know, we've always managed to make annexation work, in my recollection. Um, there's also the issue of, of not just an individual fire, but the... Uh, the wisdom that Summit Fire could give to a homeowners owners association about uh, building techniques, about uh, wildfire uh, preparation and thinning. Uh, you would, you know, in, in this country, 
especially in that location, you really want some history and wisdom to be applied, not just house by house. So I would definitely encourage uh, Mr. Short to kick this uphill as high as it needs to go and, and try to resolve this so we can do what we just typically do, which is get a subscription from the nearest uh, fire company. I, I, I would not support uh, house by house, uh, that it just is, given what we've had in the last few years with fires, that's just not the way I think we should be going. Thank you. And Commissioner Best, um, yeah, I, I certainly understand that point of view. I, this was approved, I believe it was June of 2020. So it is something that I think, I'll, I'll just say, I think the, the applicant needs to move forward with the right of way. I mean, you know, right away and, and get started with this. Um, so I'm not sure if what the issue has been with this one because we have had this happen many, many times. And I, I never even have dealt with this issue before because the applicant is, has done it and, and annexed into the fire district. So that's a good there, point as well. There may be some sort of a hybrid system where individuals could do a subscription uh, house by house over the next year or two, get, you know, get uh, ground broken out there with the requirement that over time, everybody be brought into the, the summit fire annexation. And that might take some creative condition writing, but uh, it's possibly that's an answer. It, it sounds like it's a time issue more than anything else. Why, it, why it takes a year or years to create a, an annexation. I have no idea, but I'll leave that up to, to staff, but I, definitely this, is a uh, new territory and I don't think it's good territory. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Best. Any other questions from the commissioners before we move on? So, so this is Mike Palmer again. As I understand it, um, the, the, the requirement not that I'm not going to pursue it, but if it comes down to a time thing, the requirements for a subdivision are not there that it has to be in a subscription or annex. Are you guys telling me now that that's going to be denied? Mr. Short, can you address that question? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Palmer, I, 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 at this point, we have a request from you uh, as the applicant, and we, we have that recorded. That What we'll do at this point is analyze that request. We'll look at it as staff. We'll look at some different options. And the staff report that comes forward for the January 5th hearing, uh, that will, that will uh, have an analysis of this case and in possibly some you know some recommendations for the planning and zoning commission to move forward now the planning and zoning commission in this case they make rec they also make recommendations to the board of supervisors so the board of supervisors would ultimately make the decision on this case so uh, you know they could accept the recommendations of the planning and zoning commission or they might not so it, there is still a little bit of time going forward at this i would i would as i've said before in my you know emails to you and to ian um <clears throat> i would begin the process of annexation you know right now i would start that process and, and start moving toward that because this will take a few months just to get through this case and it it might be best just to get that going an, another uh, suggestion might be to to take a look at HOA CCNRs. You know, you could do a lot through uh, building techniques that are fire resistant, uh, com keeping combustibles away from buildings. You might address a lot of issues there. Uh, and then again, in the long term, try and get to subscription or annexation. Uh, with Summit Fire, but at least you could get the ball rolling. If, if, if our goal here is to both have the long-term long annexation 
uh, and short-term groundbreaking. It just, I think it takes some creativity, but I, I bet you, you can get there. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Best. Are there any other questions? Uh, no, Mr. Shore, why don't we go ahead and move on to the third item on the study session, please? Thank you, Madam Chair, we will, we will do that. Okay, so this case is uh, DRO 21014, it's a request for design review for 31 rental cabins, uh, which is considered to be a hotel motel in our zoning ordinance and a general store, which is considered to be a retail store in our zoning ordinance. This is on three parcels totaling 4.52 acres in the CG 10,000 zone. And this property is located right uh, across the street, across Quintana Drive from our community development offices. So everyone at community development is very uh, familiar with this particular site. So let me go ahead and I'll, I, I'll go ahead and go through this uh, PowerPoint and kind of show you what the applicant is proposing. Uh, this is the subject property. This is the county offices right down here. This is a large lot and then two smaller lots. And if you'll note, these are this, and this is both city of Flagstaff boundaries. So this is a, I call it a peninsula that goes across Highway 180, Fort Valley Road right here, and, and goes in further to the west into the city. So this is a prime property for annexation. I understand the applicant has had some difficulty with that, with trying to annex into the city. I'm trying to look into that as well. However, this case is a design review case only, and that's the main issue that the, that is the issue that the commission could, should be considering. I did want to say that I, I sent this application, the site plan uh, off to different county departments, including public works and our engineering division and environmental quality division. And they did get back to me with some comments. Uh, they indicated that, uh, as you know, Hobby 180 is a, a dot facility, Arizona Department of Transportation facility. So this connection to Quintana would be looked at and the uh, public works department did feel like that they, that they may be required to put in some turn lanes in, in this area for the increased traffic. Potentially also another entrance on this side to take some of the impact off of Quintana here. We don't know. If that's going to happen at this point, this is this is just the design stage of it. It this is a use, by the way, that's permitted by right, so it does not require conditional use. It uh, once the design is is uh, approved, it will move forward to a building division to building permit stage, and those things will be addressed at that time. But the important thing for you to consider, and I'll go ahead and move on to the site plan here, <clears throat> is that part of the DRO process is to approve the site. So the site could change somewhat if additional connections are created or additional lanes are created down here. Staff does not feel that like that's significant enough, uh, you know, to, uh, we don't see that as being substantial enough to come back to you with another DRO, but we just wanna show, let you know that up front. So this is the site plan. You can see the 31 cabins and down here is a general store that's proposed. They have proposed, this is kind of interesting. They have proposed paving coming in. You can see this darker area that would be paved. And then this area would, is actually proposed as aggregate or gravel. And if you read the DRO for the Fort Valley area plan, it does indicate that it supports gravel in some areas like this. So they did read that and look at it and are, are trying to comply with that. This is a landscape, their land, preliminary landscape plan. I've looked at it, it looks like that it is, uh, it works for 
a, a concept, conceptual plan for landscaping. I think it's fine for that. It may require some adjustments, but not very many. There are a lot of existing trees on this site. You can see those that have the, the dotted lines. Those are existing trees, a lot of ponderosas. This is the proposed lighting fixtures. I have sent their conceptual lighting plan to Mark Stento, our, our lighting expert. He has looked at it. He indicated these lighting fixtures may need to have some adjustments. He wasn't quite sure if the colors were right, uh, if the color temperature was right, uh, but uh, we felt that it was good enough for a conceptual plan. Obviously, a, a light per lighting permit would be required later, which would address any of those issues. These are the cabins they're proposing. They originally had come in and they had a black roof and staff asked them to uh, change the roofing to more of an earth tone, which is cited in the Fort Valley area plan design guidelines. And this is what they, this is called a dark bronze, which staff feels like works for those guidelines. And this is the general store, same type of roofing and siding. This is uh, an example of the siding that they're looking at. And this is their sign plan. Uh, this would be a sign of obviously out on Fort Valley Road. Uh, they are actually proposing that same brown color. That's my understanding at this point for this sign because black is not really an earth tone. So we have indicated to them that they need to provide a a rendition or an elevation of the sign that is not in black. So they are looking at doing that. And with that, I'll take any questions from the commission. Bob, I've got a question. Um, are they drilling a well here? And do they have a big septic system or how are they dealing with those two things? Uh, this, if, as you can see in the middle, this is their proposed septic system, uh, and I think this might be a, a, a extra drain fields if they need them. So those are issues that we will, we will be looking at. Um, uh, the environmental quality supervisor has indicated that there may be requirements from in the state statutes that they hook up to sewer lines because they're close to them. We're still looking at that. I, I do want to reiterate though, that this is uh, just the, we're just looking at the, the design. This is only a DRO. So the commission is only looking at the design of this site and the buildings. Uh, so those things will need to be addressed later. I have let the applicant know that Approval of a DRO does not constitute approval of obviously a building permit for everything else. Uh, I believe there's a well right over here, and I, I think the applicant is here and they can address that if the commission would like. Yeah, I'd be interested, just curiosity. Can you guys hear me? Christine, are you here? Would you like to address that? Or maybe Danny? Uh, yes, you're really low, though, so if you could turn your mic up. Okay. Um, we are anticipating on putting a well in, and that is correct for the leach field that you that you showed everybody. Is this the well site yes. over here? Yes, it's going to be close by there. Okay. Yeah, if you look at the driveway, the wells that exist are on the right side and the proposed wells on the left side of the driveway as you're entering the site. Right, this is a proposed well right here? Correct. Okay, and this is an existing well that serves Quintana, part of that subdivision. Right, any more questions, any other questions for the applicant? Yes, this is Commissioner Best. Um, in both the comprehensive plan and regional plan, we have gateway community language, and I'd encourage you to take a look at that and see how that might influence this project. Um, one idea might be to, you know, we've got some berms on Highway 180 these days. Uh, 
some we rather wish we didn't have a little farther out, but this might be a great place uh, for a berm along the highway. It looks like you got a very narrow strip of vegetation there, but um, it might be possible to, to do something like a three or four foot CMU wall down along the highway and then between that and the highway and the highway side put in a berm so that you're you're softening the look of this as you drive by for the gateway values and you're also reducing some of the noise from traffic for your your cabin residents so i would just uh, encourage you to, to uh, take a look and see what the plans say our policy documents and see if we could soften this up as much as possible make you know get as much greenery in there as we can so that you're not just driving by a, a row of cabins uh, which if you know if just imagine coming in 180 that's really not that consistent with uh, how it looks now and it does have a particular look that we'd like to maintain thank you Austin. Yeah, if you guys have any comments, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Christine. I'm sorry. Um, did you have the second sheet of the site plan application? It has some um, illustrations of the fence we're proposing along 180. Um, it's a split rail fence, as but I think it would help to share with the commission what our intentions are, what the owner's intentions are. Is this All right? I'm sorry. I do. I do remember that now. Let me see, I, I can see if I can pull that up. Was that on the landscape plan? No, it was, uh, it was the second sheet of the site plan. Okay. Now, the advantage of the berm is that it, it blocks the view and gives you vegetation all year long. Generally speaking, especially deciduous vegetation, um, you know, once it loses its leaves, you're going to be looking right through that fence and into the project. Okay, I'm going to see if I can bring that up here. Can, let's see. Yeah. Is the commission able to see that? Yeah, that looks like the uh, bordering the Museum of Northern Arizona property. Is that true? This is the, the detail for the fence. I'm not sure, but this yeah. is what they were pro are proposing for fencing along the highway. And that does look like the, the fence in front of the museum that uh, has been there for many, many decades. Uh, I think they maybe use that as an example. Yeah, it doesn't block the view of a line of cabins. It, the owner has intended to, the, is proposing this split rail fence with a lot of vegetation in between as it zigzags across the frontage. And will the vegetation be evergreen? And, and, I do believe they're proposing um, the fir trees and evergreens, uh, spruce trees is what his, his preference was, was large spruce trees that would build and bulk up and screen, provide screening there. Okay, any more comments from the commission? Yeah, I've got one. Well, I've got one. Um, I think given the location that I do not think that the aggregate on that rest of that driveway is appropriate. Uh, I mean, I really think, I mean, I understand why we have it in a lot of the county, but this is like in the city. And I, I just don't think that the aggregate is appropriate. So I would encourage paving 
in, or in this motel uh, development, I guess is something I'm gonna throw out there. Hey, Commissioner Williams, thanks. Uh, and and I, I understand your point, certainly that this is within the Fort Valley area plan, but most of what we think of as Fort Valley is pretty far out there to where this gets closer into the city and, and may require a more formal environment. I think that's what you're saying, more formal development. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's a good point. Thank, thank you, Mr. Williams. Oh, and um, also I have had, I've gotten a couple emails from people that live in Fort Valley about this that had heard about it. Um, and they understand that, you know, it is um, an appropriate based on the zoning development. Um, and this doesn't have anything to, to do with our DRO, but the main concern is traffic. And they're, they've expressed great concern about having an appropriate traffic impact analysis. And um, I know it's ADOT is, a big player here. Um, but anyway, that that seems to be the overwhelming concern of people in this area that travel 180 daily. Um, so I'm just going to throw that out there as um, wherever in this process that happens, I think that is going to be the biggest concern for re for residents, neighbors. Thank you, Commissioner Williams. Um, and I, when I did send it, when I sent this over to Public Works Department, they did have, you know, definitely, see, you know, definitely some pretty strong comments about their concern about traffic as well. So they will be required to get encroachment permits from Arizona Department of Transportation and meet any requirements, you know, that are shown to be required by a. TIA, so that that will go forward, and as I have explained or have explained before, this is a design review project. So there's a lot more to look at besides just the design. But these these uses are permitted by right in the CG 10,000 zone. All right, any more questions from the commission, or shall we move on? Yeah, Bob. Wait, when you. Uh... When you move forward with this, would you get a rendering from street level looking into the project? So we so we can see what a passerby will see as they drive by. I think we can ask the applicant, is that something that you could produce? Um, yes, I think I think we can put that together. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay, right Mr. There. Shore, why don't we, yeah, why don't we go ahead and move on? We've got 15 minutes um, to complete the rest of the study session. Yes, I'm seeing that as well, Madam Chair. Okay, we'll move on to the next case. This case is, um, it's AM 2101. It's a request for amendment to the zoning ordinance to update the flood management overlay zone to comply with the requirements of the Arizona Department of water resources. I believe John Carr is here and he can uh, describe this briefly since we are kind of running out of time. I will say that this will probably be moved up uh, to either late January or February, probably, I mean, or March. It, it will not be heard on the 5th, but I'll let John do a quick analysis, a quick uh, description of this. Hey there, John. Um, Mr. Short, I'm yes. not seeing I'm not seeing him on um, or have, hearing him. I'm not either. Well, let's see. Ms. Shaw raised her hand. Ms. Shaw, do you have comments? Yes, you can. Yeah. Thank you, Chair Tavares. Um, I don't see that John is in the office right now, but um, I've been working with him a bit on scheduling this, and. Um, they do need to move this forward and per ADWR, Arizona Department of Water Resources requirements, what they're wanting to do is actually remove this portion 
um, if you recall, the floodplain overlay zone is in the zoning ordinance. They want to remove that from the zoning ordinance so it becomes a standalone document and that needs to be in effect by July 18th. So we're, we're looking at trying to coordinate this uh, possibly with bringing forward the renewable energy ordinance. They are two different cases, but the uh, formatting then of the zoning ordinance um, ideally could be done at the same time um, by adding a new section and then taking an old section out. So I just wanted to mention that because that would, okay. would mean okay. then bringing the renewable energy ordinance forward um, possibly, we have three possible dates to bring this forward to you to make that July 18th deadline in February, okay. March or April. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Madam Chair, I, I do want to mention that the next case that is shown as an administrative case, the applicant has indicated that uh, they would like to modify their site plan somewhat. So that will be going to a hearing on January 5th. Uh, and that is has been assigned to Kelly. Okay. Uh, Kelly, you want to go ahead and talk about this case a little bit? This is... This is the, uh, it's a request for conditional use, use permit renewal with modification at this point for a 2.0 acre parcel that is an RV park. This is the Pine Breeze RV Park out in Belmont. Thank you, Mr. Short. Um, I will show an aerial photo of the site uh, to orient ourselves really quickly. Um, this is right in between Old Route 66 and the I-40 out in Belmont. Uh, it is visible from both sides of the highway. Uh, this is what it looks like. And the applicant is hoping to add some RV storage in addition to the RV sites that it rents out currently. So Mr. Short has been working with the applicant to amend their site plan and we'll be bringing that to you next month. Here are the conditions uh, from the old uh, application. I believe this was CUP 1734. Uh, you'll note that um, all RVs must be parked or stored uh, within the property, uh, so not on the ADOT right of way. Uh, and we're working with the applicant to make sure that all of their spaces, even historic ones that they've been using for years are in fact on the property where they should be. Um, and we'll work with them to make sure that uh, they get any other permits that they need. Um, but that is pretty much it. Uh, I don't want to take too much of our time here. Um, so we'll just be looking at conformance with these previous conditions, addressing the off-premise parking and storage, uh, making sure any new sites meet regulatory requirements. Uh, are there any questions on this case? Yeah, I'm Kelly, not I, seeing any. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I would ahead, like to. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about it in a different setting because we don't have time right now. Uh, so I will email you. I have a question or two. Sounds good, Commissioner Bess. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bingham. I'm not seeing anything else at this time. Um, Mr. Short, would you move forward with the Community Development Department update, please? Yes, Madam Chair, I'll continue with that. Uh, so the uh, we do have interviews scheduled for next week, December the 8th, for a Assistant Director Planning Manager position. Hopefully we can find someone in that interview process. Uh, the county remains on phase two operations for COVID-19, our, our building is still open to the public. Uh, you're required to wear a mask. Uh, and I'll kind of skip over some of these. Melissa, would you like to just give us uh, a little bit of update on the, on the various issues that you have, kind of sticking to the most important ones since we're short on time? Sure, thank you, Bob and Sharon Tavares. I think the, and this is actually not listed, but I did want to mention that we've been emailing with the commissioners about having a retreat with you on December 16th to dive deep into the draft of the renewable energy ordinance. So um, 
that's something that you should have seen emails on and we'll get more information out to you on that shortly. Uh, we are still moving forward on the Donny Park Timberline Fernwood area plan update. The next meeting um, with that group is December 9th and then again on December 16th. So for, for commissioners who are on both the Renewable Energy Ordinance and the Donny Park Timberline Fernwood area plan uh, projects, that's gonna be a busy evening. And um, then also on the, uh, we still have Brownfields grant funding available for any properties that possibly want an assessment to understand uh, what may be uh, lurking on different properties as far as contaminants. And then finally with the regional plan update, we are continuing to work with the city and every Monday there are snapshot webinars being being presented on different topics that are forming the background for the regional plan. So I know that's a very quick overview, but I'll just stop and see if there are any questions on those projects. Um, this Commissioner Best, I'd just like to uh, encourage all the other commissioners to really try to make this um, meeting about the Renewable Energy Ordinance. Uh, our, our situation very briefly is that we're gonna have huge facilities coming at us probably before the ordinance is completed. And uh, that's my understanding at least. And we've really learned a lot, developed a lot of ideas, but there's probably not going to be an ordinance to guide us if, if I'm hearing correctly that these uh, some of these projects will have their application in before the ordinance is done and therefore the ordinance doesn't apply. So we're going to need to figure out how to apply these values and lessons learned uh, without the ordinance. And, and it's, there's a lot to do and a lot to know. So I, I think it'll be a really great opportunity for all, us all to get together on, I think it's the 16th. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Best. I'm, I'm going to go ahead, to, uh, Madam Chair. Yeah your blessing yes, yes, and talk so about the Board of Supervisors update. So on November 9th, the board held a hearing on ZC2102. That's the Flagstaff Fire Mitigation Standards Update and approved that. And the board has scheduled for December the 14th. There they will hear the briar patch and zone change. And with that, Madam Chair, uh, is there any commission or staff around table discussion or shall we take a break before the hearing begins um well let's reach out and see does do any of the commissioners have on um, any comments concerns questions uh for roundtable okay i'm not seeing any hands so why don't we do a five minute break and we'll start back um promptly at 5 30. thank you madam chair
Okay, Mr. Short, are you there? Yes, Madam Chair. All right, okay, my clock shows 5.30, so I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Um, welcome to the December 1st meeting of the Coconino County Planning and Zoning Commission. Cases will be heard in the order they appear on the agenda. Following the staff presentation, the applicant and or the applicant's representative may address the commission. As an applicant, if you agree with the staff report and have no additional information, please feel free to keep your comments brief. Any relevant comments are welcome. Following the applicant's presentation, I will make a call to the public. If you wish to address this case, please state your name and address. We ask that your comments be limited to three minutes or less. Comments must be relevant to the case. Please address all comments to the commission. No matter how strongly you may feel about the case, all comments must be polite and courteous. After all interested public have spoken, the public comment portion will be closed. Discussion will then take place amongst commissioners. No additional public comments may be made unless requested by a commissioner. Decisions of this commission regarding any zone change or preliminary subdivision plan approval are referred to the Board of Supervisors as a recommendation. All other case decisions are binding unless appealed to the Board of Supervisors. If you disagree with the commission's decision, you have 15 days to appeal. Please contact staff at the Community Development Office for appeal procedures. Due to the virtual nature of this meeting, I will be doing a roll call vote of the commissioners to ensure accuracy for the record. Please mute your speakers and turn off your camera. Thank you for joining us this evening and actively participating in our planning, um, in our county planning. Um, the first item on the agenda tonight is the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Short, would you please lead us? Yes, Madam Chair. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the, of the minutes from October 27, 2021. So if there are no modifications or corrections, um, let's go ahead and move to a motion and second on this, please. I make a motion for approval of the October 27, 2021 minutes. I'll uh, second that motion. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Walters and a second by Commissioner Ruggles to approve the October 27, 2021 minutes. All in favor, please say aye. Commissioner Best? Aye. Commissioner Ruggles? Aye. Commissioner Burton? Aye. Commissioner Williams? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. This is Chair Ontiveros. I also vote aye. The um, minutes are approved. The motion passes unanimously. The first item on our public hearing agenda tonight is case number DRO 21 012. Thank you, Madam Chair. This case is the BHO Lab DRO. That's DRO 2112. In this case, the property owner is the Bellado Family Trust of Flagstaff. The applicant is Carl Teis of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Location of the property is at 4860 Ken Mori Drive in Belmont. The zoning is planned community with IL 10,000 standards applied. Size of the parcel is 1.42 acres. And the request is a design review for a prefabricated BHO. That's a butane hash oil lab on the side of an existing infusion facility. This is a vicinity map showing the Belmont area and the subject property. It is in South Belmont in the industrial area, primarily surrounded by IL 10,000 zoning. It is right next door to Shuff Steel. And this is an aerial photo showing the subject property. There are actually two buildings on this site. This is the subject building and the lab would be installed right here in these parking spaces. 
staff has checked the parking of the property and it, it does still maintain uh, adequate parking for the uses that are there. So this is a little bit, uh, this is some information about the proposed development. It is a laboratory on the side of an existing infusion facility. Uh, the laboratory is tan in color and that is consistent with the Belmont area plan design guidelines that requires earth tone colors. Uh, the lab has been installed by the applicant at risk pending approval of the DRO by the commission. Uh, changes to lighting, signage, and landscaping are not proposed as part of this DRO. This is a site plan showing the existing facility on the site and the location of the VHO lab. And as you can see, there's still quite a bit of parking here. This is a photograph on the, of the lab on the site. As I said, it, it has been installed at risk by the applicant. Uh, and as you can see, it matches the beige, beige color that the applicant has proposed. This is from outside the site from Ken Mori Drive. And as you can see, there is some screening of the lab uh, in this location. Uh, however, if you if you look at it, there is an opening right here, and this the opening the gate does not have any screening on it. So the lab is obviously going to be visible from Ken Mori Drive. It I just need to emphasize that this is an industrial area, unlike a case we heard last month where there's residences around. This is an industrial area, light industrial or area, and it is expected to have you know, some industrial things going on here. So it, it seems appropriate in this location. And in terms of uh, public comments, uh, the there have been no public comments on this, receiving this application. And as you may know, a neighborhood meeting is not required for DRO applications. It's simply notice to neighbors and neighbors may comment on that. And with that, staff recommends the commission approve DRO 2112 with the conditions in the staff report. And with that, I'll take any questions from the commission. Mr. Short, I'm not seeing any, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask if the applicant or the applicant's representative is here and would like to address the commission. Hello, Chair, yes. Okay. Okay, um, Miss, um, is it Nyehouse? Kneehaus, close enough. Kneehaus, okay. Um, I would like to ask if you would please st state your name and address for the record. And I also would like to ask you if you have read the staff report and if you agree with the one condition that is in there. Absolutely. My name is Lauren Niehaus, located at 1155 West Rio Salado Parkway, Suite 201 in Tempe, Arizona, 85281. I am the Director of Government Relations for Truly Cannabis Corporation. Uh, I'm here tonight primarily to, to serve, uh, to answer any questions that you all may have. Thank you, Mr. Short, for your comprehensive report. We are committed to complying with the conditions Mr. Short laid out for you in his presentation, and we do support the staff recommendation for approval of this facility. This facility is complete and ready for occupancy pending approval by this body, as well as the Arizona Department of Health Services. If any questions um, of any of the commissioners would like to come my way, I'm more than happy to address. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Niehaus, or Ms. Niehaus. Um, I'm not seeing any questions from the commissioners, so I'm going to go ahead and um, ask if there is anyone in the public that wishes to address the commission on this case this evening. If so, please either unmute or raise your hand so I can see you. And I am not seeing any, so I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment portion and open it up at commission level. Commissioner Best? Uh, Madam Chair, I don't see any problem with this. It seems fairly invisible, so I can make the findings. Thank you. Commissioner Ruggles? Thank you, uh, 
Chair Ontiveros. Uh, I also can make the findings. Uh, it's an industrial, uh, industrial, uh, light industrial zoned uh, area. Uh, the structure is appropriate considering what it backs up to. So no problem there. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Commissioner Burton? I don't have any problem with it. I can make the findings. Thank you. Commissioner Williams? Uh, yeah, I'm in agreement with everybody so far. So looks good to me. Okay, thanks, Commissioner Williams. Commissioner Walters? Um, I can make the findings. I'm a little irritated that they went ahead and put the laboratory in here without coming to us first, but um i'm very familiar with the site and the and the building and uh, i can make the findings okay thank you um and this is chair on Tavares, and i also can make the findings um i also concur with commissioner ruggles comments that this is an industrial area and this this look this addition fits it fits nicely it's like a pocket on a shirt so with that why don't we go ahead and move to a motion in the second please so yeah, I'll go ahead with a uh, motion on this. Um, I'd like to make a motion for approval of DRO 21-012 with conditions as stated by staff. A second that. Okay, I've got a motion by Commissioner Ruggles and a second by Commissioner Walters for approval of DRO 21-012. All in favor, please say aye. Commissioner Best? Aye. Commissioner Ruggles? Aye. Commissioner Burton? Aye. Commissioner Williams? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. This is Chair Ontiveros and I also vote aye. The motion passes unanimously. The uh, next item on the agenda is CUP 21-070. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the commission. This case is the RWE Zeus Met Towers, that's CUP 20-070. In this case, the property owner is Babbitt Ranches, LLC of Flagstaff. The applicant is Morgan Swin of RWE Renewal Development of Austin, Texas. Uh, the size of the parcels, there's actually two parcels totaling 16,653.43 acres, <clears throat> but in, the, in actuality, it's about two acres per tower. Obviously, these are very big parcels out on Babbitt Ranches, and the zoning is general request is to installation of four 60 meter meteorological towers, also known as MET towers. This is a vicinity map showing the subject uh, properties or the general location of them. You can see Valley over here to the west, Tucson to the northwest, and they encompass this area right here of Babbitt Ranches. And this is a site plan of the uh, subject property and the, the proposal. I do have this turned sideways so it fits on the page better and you can see the map better. If you see the two blue uh, icons here, these are towers that have already been approved for this, this site or these sites. And they are currently proposing these four new towers on two different parcels. And obviously that's north to the left. This is a picture showing the subject property or actually we're, you're looking back uh, across Babbitt Ranches and those two parcels are back in this area, back in the background. Uh, and I am also showing a picture of a previous Met Tower that was installed, approved by the commission and installed on this site to give you an idea about how it looks. A little background on this project. Met, Met Towers, as the commission probably knows at this point, are required to test meteorological conditions to determine the viability of a wind farm. So whenever they put up Met Towers, they are looking at potentially installing a Met Tower in this location. Uh, I think this project is already called the Zeus project. So they are expecting to move forward at some point. Uh, the 
main issue with this is probably the they can, the guy wires that hang off of these towers uh, can harm wildlife. So bird divert birders are required by the Arizona Department of Game and Fish. In terms of citizen participation, as you know, this is a very remote location. So the director did waive the requirement for a neighborhood meeting. The Navajo Nation and Arizona State Department of Lands were notified of the proposal and staff has not received any comments on this proposal. A little staff analysis here. Met towers are allowed in the general zone with approval of conditional use permit. This is an isolated area. It's not near any roadways or highways, so it won't be seen by anyone, but probably ranchers and some hunters in the area. The towers are less than 200 feet in height. They're 60 meters, which is about, I believe it's 197.8 feet, eight inches. And the FAA does not require lighting on these towers. The application is consistent with the policies of the comprehensive plan, as I've shown in the staff report. These are the findings of fact for conditional use permit. Uh, I have addressed those in the staff report. And with that, staff recommends approval of CEP 20070 with the recommended conditions. And with that, I'll take any questions from the commission. Um, Mr. Short, I'm not seeing any. I do have one. Where are these Met Towers? in relation to the Babbitt Ranch Energy Project that we just approved. Okay, Madam Chair, uh, so this is the project area, uh, the Breck site, and, and the, this kind of covers more area than it should. I think it probably goes about right in here, something like this. So the Breck site is directly to the west of here. So it's in this area right, right in here. And some of these will overlap. And I believe this one uh, overlaps the Breck site because these parcels are so large out here that some of these projects will overlay, uh, overlap different parcels. They're just really big parcels. Uh, so that's basically it. The Breck site would be right in here. Okay, okay. So, so if these if these Met Towers did show a viable wind source, we would be having another energy project almost adjacent to the one that we just approved. Am, am I correct with that? Madam Chair, that is correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's all the questions that I have. Do any commissioners have any other questions? And I'm not seeing any. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask if the applicant or the applicant's representative would like to address the commission on this case tonight. Okay, I'm not seeing the applicant here, Mr. Short or you, the applicant certainly does not have to be here. I just don't want to miss them if they are. Madam Chair, I believe the applicant was going to be here, or a representative. Let me see if I okay. can. Let me see who is, let me take an inventory here to see. Yeah, we just had two people log off. Hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Um, I, don't I know think you may are. be correct, Madam Chair. I apologize okay. for that. I understood that they were to, were to be here. Okay, and no, and that's fine. We'll go ahead and proceed. Um, certainly they're, um, we, there can be no questions asked of the applicant. So I'm going to go ahead and ask if um, there is somebody anyone. just connected. Yes, okay, hi. Hold on a minute. hi, I apologize. I was unable to get myself off mute. My name is Michael Savori. I'm the director of development for RW Renewables based out of Austin, Texas. My address is 3400 Harmon Avenue, Austin 78705. Uh, so sorry for not being able to speak up. I, for some reason, was unable to get myself off mute, but <clears throat> Morgan Schwinn is the actual project developer uh, for this project. She had some minor surgery. 
uh, earlier today and asked me to to join the call. So I'm more than happy to address any questions the commission may have and appreciate the time uh, and effort put into the presentation. So more than happy to answer questions. Okay. Um... Michael, I didn't catch your last name, so I'm just going to call you Michael, okay? No, please, um, I, I would prefer it. Okay, okay. Um, and no worries on the, the disconnect. It is, um, it's, it's the tech world that we live in, so don't worry about that. Um, I am going to ask if any of the commissioners have any questions for Michael. And I am not seeing any. Um, Michael, I am going to ask you if you have read received, read, and agreed with the staff report that was presented this evening. Ma'am, I, I have not received a copy of it yet. Um, Morgan Schwinn may have. I, I agree with what was said, um, Okay. but I, I apologies. I don't know. I hope this doesn't prevent us from being able to approve it this evening, but... Um, no, no, we're going to go forward. If you heard Mr. Short's presentation... Yes. Um, that was the condensed version of the report. So if there was nothing in there that caused you angst, I think we can I think we can assume that you do not have a problem with it. Yes, ma'am. I would appreciate that. And yes, I, everything that Mr. Short presented um, uh, it did not cause me any any concern. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask if there is anyone in the public that wishes to address the commission on this case this evening. And not seeing any, I'm going to go ahead and close it to public comment, open it up to uh, uh, commission discussion. Commissioner Bess? Madam Chair, uh, I don't think I have any questions, and I can make the findings. Okay. Um, Commissioner Ruggles? Thank you. I can definitely make findings for the CUP. Okay, Commissioner Burton. I can make the findings. Okay, Commissioner Williams. I can make the findings as well. Okay, Commissioner Walters. I too can make the findings. I'd just like to state that I'm, I'm concerned with the, the uh, amount of submissions that we have that were earlier addressed by Commissioner Best as well, but that's all I have. Okay, and this is Commissioner or Chair Ontiveros. Um, these are MET towers. That is all we are approving tonight. I also can make the findings to approve those, but that in no way should be construed as tacit approval of a of an energy project. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and ask the. Uh, let's go ahead and move to a motion in a second, please. I'll make a motion for approval of CUP-21-070 as presented. I'll go ahead and second that. Okay, I've got a motion by Commissioner Walters and a second by Commissioner Ruggles um, for approval of CUP-21-070. All in favor, please say aye. Commissioner Best? Aye. Commissioner Ruggles? Aye. Commissioner Burton? Aye. Commissioner Williams? Aye. Commissioner Walters? Aye. Uh, can it, this is Chair Ontiveros, and I also um, vote aye. The motion to approve CUP 21-070 passes unanimously. And the last item on the agenda tonight is call to the public for items not on the agenda. So is there anyone who wishes to address the commission this evening for items not on the agenda? If so, please unmute or raise your hand so I can see you. And I'm not seeing anyone. So I am going to go ahead and my clock shows 5.54 PM. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Good night, everybody. See you on the 16th. Yep. Yes, and very all on the 16th. Yes. Good night, all. Yes, I will definitely be there. And I hope everybody can come because Commissioner Bess um, was right when he said this is this is really important. So I hope everyone can be there. Good night, all. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night everyone.